Welcome back, welcome back. This is still Y in the morning. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining, you're on time for the first conversation of the day on career. And today we're talking all about tapping into hidden potential. Um, and for that, we have Sarah Muni, who's a life coach, an executive leadership uh and management consultant as well as a corporate trainer and evangelist among many other titles that she holds and she's here to take us through this topic remember the hashtag we're using today is why in the morning at y254 channel so keep your questions coming if you have any as we go by sarah karibu sana thank you thank you so much for the warm welcome uh, yes. we're glad to have you yes thank you you hold so many hearts <laughs> <laughs> yes of course sometimes you need to mm -hmm. you know you need to that's why we are speaking about hidden potential right yeah you realize you're so many things because you've been created with endless you know uh, greatness mm -hmm. so we need to keep on exploring it and we need to keep on exploiting it so that it can bring out it can bring out the best version of ourselves okay. so yes i do hold many titles <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just put the one you want me to use and uh, I'll use it. Okay, <laughs> today we can use the life coach. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's good. Okay, <laughs> so let's talk about potential, hidden potential, tapping into the hidden potential. Let's start yes. from how do you know, uh, you know, your potential as a person? Um, I think it's very important to uh, at least know some of the gifts and talents that you have. Mm -hmm. um, we need to always have, uh, you know, as a life coach, what I do, I usually come into your life and ask you some very hard questions about your life. What are your passions? And sometimes you think you know yourself until you ask some questions and you, you realize, oh my God, you know, you start mumbling, you start, <laughs> yeah. you know, stammering. Yeah. So I think um, you need to, f first of all, be aware of your strengths. Mm -hmm. and, and weaknesses as well and also your abilities you need to be able to point them out these are my abilities this is what I can do this is what these are the skills I have learned I have earned by learning these um, um, skills I have you know naturally those are the gifts and talents mm -hmm. it comes as a process of, of realizing those kind of gifts and talents otherwise if you don't know that mm -hmm. you'll end up you know uh, getting into any type of career because you don't know really your strengths, you don't know really your talents, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you need to have people like life coaches or mentors or people who just can just call out the potential in you. Sometimes you're not able to see it yourself. You need other people mm -hmm. to look at you and say, oh, you're so good in this, you're so good in that, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you are able to bring out, you know, the, the best version. And let me say this. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I, you know, you were speaking about soccer. I think you were speaking about Manu and, and Arsenal, what have, yes. And Arsenal, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know the coaches, they usually have coaches, those footballers, right? Yeah. The coaches don't play. So the work of the coach is to look at you when you're playing and say, mm -mm, you can't pay, play midfielder. Your strength will best come out if you play maybe number nine, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is at the other position. <laughs> you best play a striker. Yeah. Or you best play midfielder or 18, whatever, like, you know, because yeah. they are able to point out, they are able to uh, stand at a vantage point and look at you and say, oh, at this time you need to sit down because you are, your energy is out. At this mm. point you need to come back. You need people like that. To guide that way. you. That's why those people are very successful, those footballers, mm. because they have coaches and, and they have people who always keep on bringing out uh, their, their potentials and their strengths. And it's interesting to think that the same way that, uh, you know, the foot, uh, the footballers have coaches and it's normal. Yes. It's the same thing with life. And we it's need, the same thing. We need coaches. But someone mm. would ask, so how, how do we start? You know, when you come, when you come, when I come to a life coach mm. and I'm confused about something. So how do we, how do we start? What's the process? Are you mentioned some of it you ask some questions mm. what if i don't know <laughs> what happens yes yeah, so we we can start from there from a point where you don't know but we still need but there are some things you know about yourself you mm. know so and you see coaching is not training that i have to come and pump things into you first i have to let you speak mm -hmm. and i have to ask you the questions like what do you think are your strengths what do you think are your abilities i mean what are your passions what are your hobbies Sometimes somebody doesn't even know the passions, but speak about hobbies because they, they reflect ah. your passions, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we let the person speak and people speak. I was when I was in school, I was so good in this. When I was school, I was so good in that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've always had this passion. I've always people will speak. People always know the areas that maybe they are strong at. Mm -hmm. Someone may not know clearly what it is, but uh, these are these, these are these are my passions. People know that. So we try now and build on that. We mm -hmm. have to try and build on that. And then also there's a process of, uh, of knowing your, your life purpose as well. So for me, I, when it comes to career, I like 
uh, taking people through a process of purpose so that now mm -hmm. you align your purpose with your career you align your career with your purpose you know otherwise you may end up going through life and then you wake up at 40 and say, and ask yourself what am i doing in my life I always find people like that. Somebody wakes up at 45 and say, I, I have no idea what I'm doing in my life. I don't even know how I got into this career. But I mean, this is what I do. And I, I, I don't like it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to start now figuring out things from that point. So what are your passions? What have you always loved to do, but you just don't have the energy or the strength to get into? Mm -hmm. You know, so people will point out some things and we start from there. That's so a good career should start from a point of knowing your purpose. This is my purpose and let's build a career on that. If you build a career on your purpose, something that you love, you never have to work a day in your life. It's like you'll be wondering, <laughs> do they pay me to do this? <laughs> you, you, because you're doing what you it's love. It's fun to me, yes. Yeah. So mm. I, I don't work. I can, I can be working. I can be doing that at 9 p.m. in the evening. And for me, it's no work. It's, 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 it's wonderful. It's fun, you mm. know. Yeah, you enjoy it. And what is purpose? You know, someone might wonder because some people, mm. you ask them, what is your purpose? And um, they are green about it. So what is purpose? So purpose is basically the, uh, the reason for which anything is done lives or exists and mm -hmm. uh, every life has a purpose including you and when god put you in this world he put you here for a purpose you know and he packaged in you to execute a certain m mandate he packaged in you gifts and talents and abilities and you know and you know those things so to help you to equip you uh execute your mandate or your purpose on earth so purpose is the reason for which you exist and you exist for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So you're not just here, um, you know, you, you just happened on, on other at such a, a, such a time as this in this generation. Mm -hmm. And we need to ask yourself, why did God let me live in a country like Kenya? Why on earth am I on earth? Why am I even here in this company? You always mm -hmm. need to keep on asking yourself some of these hard questions. Why? Mm -hmm. why? You know, why am I here? What is my life purpose? That's one of the basic questions about life anyone should ask. Mm -hmm. Why on earth am I on earth? Why am I here? And um, uh, because you're not here to just go, you know, uh, work, go through the emotions bills, of life, adults, and then mm. and then die. You are here for a higher purpose, and it's always good to uh, for you to to identify that. So, so the first point I always say, and there are many tools that we use uh, to be able to find your life purpose. The first thing I always say, please, mm -hmm. you need to find your. The first place is in the um, is through your Creator. Okay. So you need to seek God because uh, he created you for a purpose. He has a blueprint for your life, you know. Mm -hmm. So through his word, re through reading his word, and through even prayer, you can be able to know your purpose. For me, that's the foundation. That's everything. Mm -hmm. From there, there are so many other things that we can use, so many other tools that we use. There are some other uh, very uh, basic questions about life that we ask. Like uh, one of the questions is, what makes you happy? Mm -hmm. What makes you happy? What makes you happy yourself? What makes me happy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your purpose is hidden in, I can assure you, your purpose is hidden in something that makes you happy. Okay. Yes. And should it be something that, you know, is uh, geared towards you uh, doing something for the people or should it be about you, you know? You giving service to the people or should it just revolve around you? Purpose is happy? about other people. Mm. Purpose is not about you. You are not created so that you live for yourself and your little family and then you go. Purpose is about other people. Even Jesus said, I came, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. So why did you come and why did I come? You came for other people. You came for <laughs> others. And when you don't <laughs> discover your purpose, let me tell you, the mm -hmm. world is deprived and is the way it is because people don't know why they came. Mm -hmm. You came as a solution to a problem in the world. So your life's mission should be to find that uh, purpose and step into it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the world is deprived and the world is lacking and nobody in life can ever, can ever you know, take your position in life. Nobody. Okay, so yeah. it's not all about me fight, uh, me and my happiness. My mm -hmm. happiness should be giving back yes, to people. Yes, it should be giving back to people, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's where you find a lot of fulfillment and satisfaction, you know. Um, okay. yeah. So if you're just doing things for yourself, it's just you, uh, your job. Mm -hmm. you get, there's nothing about it. It's just you. I think uh, you still need to rediscover yourself because you have something that the world needs. You okay. have something that the world needs. And you've said that this is connected to potential. So once mm. you know your purpose, then mm. it's easy to know your potential. It's easy. Now you're, you're able to use your potential in the right direction. People use their potential to even destroy their lives. Mm -hmm. Their potential because the potential becomes energy, you see, uh -huh. and they, you know to destroy their lives. So when you know your purpose, you're able to put your abilities and your potential in the, um, in the right direction and something mm -hmm. that will build your life and be even um, you know, a blessing to other people. 
Okay. And you said something, uh, okay, in your bio, I read something mm -hmm. that there needs to be change, something about change. I don't know if they're connected with potential, but even when you're doing uh, coaching or mm -hmm. um, an organization, the corporate world, you need to create change fast before, uh, you know, the company grows from where it is or it realizes its dream. Yes, change, I usually, I usually say change is a loss of something familiar. And the reason why, and change is very important, you need, even in career, you, you need to, be, to keep growing. You, it's impossible to grow without change. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow from anything, anything you're building, whether it's your career, if it's your business or anything, you need to keep growing. Mm -hmm. That means you need to keep changing. And uh, change is the loss of something familiar. So the reason why it's usually very hard for people to accept change is because it, it, it deals with loss. It has to do with loss. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we are not very good when it comes to dealing with loss. We are not, you know. So we, you need to keep changing. You need to keep growing for you to, um, for you to, kind of, uh, to see the kind of changes that you want to see or for you to keep on achieving the kind of goals that you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So change is very important. And even for career, if you, um, if you want to grow in your career, Mm -hmm. You need to keep on setting goals and, and you need to keep on, um, you know, getting in, out of your comfort zones. You mm -hmm. see, keep getting out of your comfort zones, keep on setting goals way beyond, you know, what you have done before. When is the last time you did something for the last, you know, for the first time? Okay. So you need to keep on smashing goals. You set goals, you smash them, get out of comfort zones for you to see the growth you need to see. Otherwise, you can never grow in comfort and you cannot change there. And you want to change your finances, you cannot keep on doing the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. and expect different results. It just won't happen. So change is very crucial when it comes to growth and especially career growth. Okay. And still on career growth, mm. when uh, or still on change. So what happens when someone wants to change or so want, someone wants to try too many things at once because you want to tap into those potential maybe that you have still in your career that you have not stretched to? So when do you know that you have overstretched and when do you know that I am operating in the right limitations? It's very easy. First of all, if you want to be a jack of all trades, you end up uh, spreading yourself to things, mm -hmm. I mean too thin. Because you're doing so many things at the same time. I know the people who have a lot of energy, especially the, the, the extroverts, you know. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of energy to do this and that, to do th this and that. You need to build something up to a point where you feel, uh, I mean, you have been able to establish yourself, you know. And then from there, you can maybe start something else. So mm -hmm. if you start this career here and then you, you want to get into this, you want to get into that, you spread yourself too thin. And then we also don't know what really to call you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're a journalist and then you're a filmmaker and then you are what and then you are this and this. Yeah, we really don't know what even brand you are, you know. So it also confuses people and you end up losing opportunities because people don't know exactly who you are. So it's good to build something, one thing first and then so many other things. There are so many other skills you can learn when you're building like mm -hmm. one, one, one. But um, it, you need to build something up to a point where you feel you have established and then now, if you want to venture in other things, you can venture, you know. But if you are trying to do everything at once, um, you know, you're, you're spreading. Yeah, <laughs> you spread yourself in and you want, you, you'll end up with two results, little or nothing, in everything you do. Little or nothing? In terms of results, <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm. All right. So now, uh, when do you know that uh, I'm operating in the right dimension? Should you have, uh, is that where they say you should be a jack of a master of one, a jack of all traits, but a master of one. A master, yeah. <laughs> a master of one, yes. So mm. now, should you, when you're tapping into other things, mm. should it be related to what you're doing, the main thing, even as you, uh, you have found the right, the, the main thing. Now, these others, should they be related f to the main thing? Or can you venture into something totally different still? Is, is this in terms of career or just mm -hmm. life? In career. In terms of career. So, yes. So, if, like, let's say that you're a journalist, there are so many other skills you need that can support that or can help you refine that mm -hmm. one um, career. So, yes, you need to build one thing. It's good if you build yourself as a maybe as a salesperson or as a whatever career, that, or as an accountant. Mm -hmm. you, there are so many other skills that you need. You need personal development skills. Um, you need public speaking skills. You need branding uh, skills. They all support this one. They are all to refine this one, mm -hmm. you know. So it should, be, it, it should be that. But if you're branding yourself as this, as an accountant, the next time you are an, an, you know, an auditor, the next thing you are a, this, the next thing you are a, you know, we really don't know. It confuses. And even on the CV, people really don't know 
uh, what else, what really is your key skill or your core skill. There must be that core skill that you have and then others to just uh, refine. Mm -hmm. So, um, and even it, when it comes to purpose, the purpose is one, but there are so many other things you do, they are all support. Ultimately, they all support that one. Okay. Mm. All right, and uh, let me take you to now youth empowerment and mm. still in potential because you're a champion for youth empowerment. Yeah. So how much potential do we hold as youths? What are some of the things that we lag in, in terms of career? It can't be quantified. The potential in youth cannot be quantified. And that's <laughs> why I'm saying you are created with endless greatness, endless potential. So it's up to you to be very deliberate, to be very intentional, to be very purposeful mm. about, you know, bringing it out. And that's why you need people like mentors. You need people like life coaches because you, in yourself, you, you may not be able to do, to know, um, you know, all the gifts and talents that you have and you know, just, just have that self-drive to bring them out. Sometimes you need somebody to push you and somebody to make sure that your goals remain your priority. Mm -hmm. So youth have endless potential. And that is why we usually have, uh, myself, I usually hold a lot of programs for youth, you know, um, you know, just to just bring out that potential in different things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, like there are so many areas of personal development that somebody needs to grow in, in their career, in business, in ministry, in anything that you're doing. There are so many, there are so many of them. And then, by the way, I was reading somewhere a, a certain rep, um, you know a study that mm -hmm. a human being has how many gifts I think they, they were over 1,000 and something gifts you know that somebody has you know, but many people what? they only know two or one oh, and, and there are even those sure. who say yeah I don't me, for me, for me I don't have a gift mm -hmm. I don't have a, a talent <laughs> because I think a gift and talent is maybe running yeah. and drawing and singing, being able to sing. No, there are so many others, even organizational skills, leadership skills, many ability to work with those are gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and uh, uh, so we, you need somebody who can be able to point them out as a youth so that, uh, and, and youth is what I say for a youth. For youth, you have three things. Number one, you have the dreams. We have dreams, youth have dreams. I want to do this, I want to do this. Two, you have the energy to pursue these dreams. Mm -hmm. You have energy, and then number three, you have the time. You actually have the time. So these are your heydays. So this is the time to really bring out that which you feel. You know, that great person you've always seen yourself as. You know, that's the time and that's why you need these people. If you don't know how, look for help. Look out for me. Look out for life coaches. Look out for mentors. Look out for people who can see uh, potential in you and bring you out. And then let me say this. Mm -hmm. For people who say that I don't know my gift, please, you discover your gift in service. I remember uh, um, my mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, you called John Kedak and he was telling me Sarah and you know he, he mentored me in so many things and into leadership and he told me Sarah you discover your gift in, in service so I'd want if you're in school if you're in university please volunteer don't ignore those clubs you only go there uh, you're part of a club you only go there like once when there's like a some personality coming mm -hmm. <laughs> for the meeting no you need to be there built Make sure you are even like a treasure or something because you are committed. People are able to see commitment and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there, be there and serve because that's where you start realizing, oh, I didn't know I have this ability. I didn't know I have that ability. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Because for me, I remember when I got into leadership, I never saw myself as a leader because throughout high school, in primary school, I was a prefect. Throughout high school, nobody called me a prefect. Nobody because, you know, yeah. and even in college, in university, I was not. So I, for a long time, I didn't see myself as a leader. And even when I started working, I was not like a manager or a director, you see. Yeah. So for me, when leaders are being called and when responsibilities who will do this, me, I'll sit at the back. I'm not a leader. See, that's the, purpose. Uh. That's the work of leader. So until I got a mentor, and they thrust me into leadership. And then I realized it was not hard for me to plan. And this is what my mentor told me. I want you to organize a meeting for youth. Call a <laughs> hundred of them. How many people do you have on a phone book? I said the 2,000. You know I was a salesperson. Uh -huh. <laughs> As a salesperson, <laughs> you have contacts of everybody. Everybody is mm -hmm. a prospect. So I have many. So to, I only want to call a hundred. I, I only want you to call a hundred. And it was in a period of two weeks. Okay. So I want you to call a meeting. And this is what we will speak about. Mm -hmm. And I danced. I was praying, I was, you know, but then I, it's like I knew exactly what I needed to do. And I'd call people personally. Let me tell you, at the end of the day, we had a meeting of over 300 wow. people mm -hmm. at one of the hotels here in town. And it was wonderful. And then from there, it was establishing a team. It was not hard, you know, for, mm -hmm. for me. It, it was in me. It's it just that easy. I was not doing it. So mm -hmm. you volunteer. You will discover your gifts in service. You discover your gifts in service. Mm -hmm. And they say that uh, once it's your... 
yeah, it's your gift. You do it easily. You don't. You don't. You strain, flow. You yes, you flow with it. So of course, you know, I've done so many leadership programs from there. Mm. I've done so many leadership programs. I have followed leaders because you know one of the other ways you also know how to lead is by following. You cannot lead if you can't follow, mm -hmm. and if you can't take instruction, you can't give instruction and to, it, to be followed like you know. So okay. you need to be able to f stay somewhere and obey. You see the way he told me, I want you to do this. I, I didn't yeah. start saying. I have never done this. I can't do it or just disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what many people will do. Yeah. This is hard for me and you just disappear. So obedience is very key when it comes to leadership. And if you cannot obey, you cannot give instructions. Give it instructions. will be hard, yes. Mm -hmm. It will be hard. So learn to obey. And when you're somewhere, you have a mentor, you have a coach, you have people who you look at to listen to them and, and observe also because you learn by observing as well. So of course, I've had to do a lot of leadership programs today. I'm a leadership expert. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of uh, trainings in leadership for companies and organizations and even to youth groups. Yeah, but uh, you need to first of all sit somewhere at somebody's feet and learn. And learn. Yes. All right. This is very interesting. We want to take a short break and then we'll mm. come back to what you do. Tell us what you do and maybe what you can learn from, from yeah. that eventually. Uh, we take a short break. Uh, stick with us. We'll be right back.